Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Florian Maliki, who is the International Product Ma Marketing Director at StorageCraft. StorageCraft is a cybersecurity company with, uh, who speci specializes in keeping critical information safe and accessible with data protection, data management, and business continuity solutions. So welcome to the jam, Florian. Yeah, good morning to you. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. Good, good. Um, so to start off, could you just give me a brief overview of StorageCraft and what your key solutions and offerings are? Yeah, sure. So, you know, thank you very much for the opportunity. So, yeah, I mean, StorageCraft is a, you know, 70 years old plus organization, and we have basically, you know, three major key pillars when it comes down to data protection. Uh, so the first one is everything about backup and recovery. Uh, so we have two major solutions there where StorageCraft is very well known for. So the first one is, you know, Shadow Protect SPX. And then uh, the other one is a uh, called Shadow Save, which are both, you know, software products. Then the second pillar, which is very, goes in, hand in hand with our, you know, software backup and recovery products is our cloud services, which is basically a disaster recovery as a service. So that means, you know, MSPs and partners can leverage our own data center. Uh, for failover and business continuity. Um, and then the third pillar is around data management. So we have an appliance, which is basically a, a secondary storage type appliance uh, that is there to host, you know, all of your backup data, whether from storage crop or other vendors, as well as, you know, I would say your, your unstructured data. Uh, and unstructured data is obviously growing, you know, the ability to kind of accommodate these requirements as they grow with a scale out object based you know, type solutions is very important. So that's what, you know, our one safe appliance does. And obviously as well, you know, part of our backup and recovery solution set, you know, we do offer, as is very important, especially with, you know, people working from home or mobile users, you know, the ability to back up all of your, you know, Office 365, so Microsoft Office 365 environments, as well as obviously Google G Suite. So that's what, you know, StorageCraft does in a nutshell. Right. Um, and so your partner ecosystem is quite important to your business. So um, could you tell me what you've been hearing from your channel partners in the last few months? What's their feedback been like? Yeah, sure. I mean, as you said, you know, obviously we are a two tier in our uh, organization. So we work with both vendors and, and partners and, and a lot of our partners are actually MSPs, um, you know, in Australia and New Zealand and other part of the world, obviously. And then Obviously, what we've been hearing, and interestingly enough, we have had some uh, kind of wine networking sessions uh, over the last six months with our uh, partners in, in uh, New Zealand and Australia and, and our key executive. And it was interesting because we had a session, you know, towards June, and they obviously they were super busy, but with the working from home transition due, due to COVID. And I guess in that part of the world, especially in New Zealand, you know, you've done a fantastic job. Uh, however, partners have been super busy with that and, and they carry on being busy, obviously, with, you know, now that, you know, most organizations are, are accepting working from home because, to be honest, they were, they were forced down uh, to, to deploy, you know, uh, solutions and, and, and um, infrastructure to accommodate remote, remote, their remote users. You know, they've obviously been very extremely busy, but now it's time for them. What we hear is, you know, things were done very quickly. They've done very well. But now it's time, okay, let's pause for a minute and see as we go forward in a more of a hybrid approach to your working environment where people might go to the office twice a week and then the rest of the time would stay from, would be working from home. You know, and questioning, questioning whether what they've put in place to accommodate a very, you know, stressful and urgent need was that the right thing. So they were kind of reevaluating, you know, what has been done and to make sure that, you know, it's the, the base is solid enough secure enough, obviously, uh, to go forward as we go into 2021 in a more kind of hybrid environment. Um, and one thing actually they were saying, which is interesting, because we had another session a couple of weeks ago, and because these guys have been super busy, uh, they start to see a bit of staff fatigue coming in. So obviously, you know, this is kind of goes above and beyond, you know, kind of IT and technologies like, hey, how do we make sure that, you know, we keep our staff and, you know, whether it's a 10 kind of employees MSP or fairly large 50, 1600 users MSP or, or, you know, staff members MSP, how to make sure that we kind of recharge the batteries because they've been full on since, well, February, March. Uh, and now it's like, and then projects are coming in and so on and so forth. And 
yeah, they start to be a bit of a stock fatigue. So, you know, a lot of them are thinking, you know, what could we do to kind of, a, you know, get a better life balance and make sure that our staff gets regionized. So that was really important. And another thing that we heard actually from a, a partner in, in down in New Zealand was like, you know, they do the getting, you know, because of COVID and remote, you know, work, remote working and so on and so forth. You know, they have had good business. I mean, they all said, you know, they're super busy, very well, not happy with the situation, but as a result, their business is doing pretty well. Um, and one thing that someone, you know, uh, pointed out was I thought quite interesting because, you know, of what's happening, you know, the governments are funding a lot of businesses to make sure that things don't collapse. And he was, was saying, hey, one thing we need to be uh, careful with and aware of is, you know, the day that governments, whether in Australia, New Zealand, France, Europe, or across the world, start, you know, stop, you know, funding stuff or slowing it down, you know, we need to make sure that we are ready. So that means, you know, our partners are already kind of looking in terms of like how to get more new or more existing business or new customers uh, so that when things kind of slow down a bit that they kind of don't fall uh, off the cliff. So, you know, that's that's what we've been hearing from, from our partners uh, from New Zealand and, and Australia. Overall, very positive, but then staff fatigue start to kick in um, and then how to kind of make sure that, you know, they can rebound from it and that, you know, the businesses don't stop, you know, the day you know, the government start injecting cash into, into the economy. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, mainly that's what we've been, uh, that's what we've been hearing, which I think was uh, very, very useful. Uh, um, yeah. And one thing as well, they, they were mentioning, it was quite interesting because obviously earlier during the pandemic, everybody had to work from home. And then especially in Australia and New Zealand, where you guys, you know, kind of did well and then people could go back to the office like you are today. Uh, and very important as well, you know, they said that the office culture, it's still very strong. In other words, yeah, you can do so many things when people are remote, you can do web conferences like we do now. But, you know, if you are a, a team leader or if you're a, a technical engineer and then, you know, a couple of meters away from you, you can hear a sales conversation. And then you can hear maybe, you know, notice that the sales guy or the sales lady might not know the answer. You could jump in and help them. So all of these human interaction to them is, is still very critical. And the fact that they were able to kind of go back to work to some extent and say, yeah, this is still very invaluable. Uh, and another thing that came out as well in terms of, you know, the younger generation as well, how, how to get the experience and the know-how from, you know, the, uh, the older guys, yeah? Uh, and then when you work from home, everything is done remotely. Can be done, but it's not optimal. Whereas you know the ability to well, you sit you know at the same table and and obviously respecting probably social distancing and whatnot. But you know that that was another element in terms of growing their younger staff or the younger people coming to their businesses. You know that was that that that's something they mentioned that you know there's so much you can do remotely. Obviously, uh, it's much better if you can do it in the office. Right. Um, so looking forward, what. Um, are the revenue opportunities you can see for prospective storage craft partners? How yeah, could they benefit? Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, whether prospective or existing, I mean, obviously, they still, you know, um, as customers, you know, SMBs, mid enterprise, large enterprise, you know, depending on what, you know, type of business or specific partners are serving, you know, uh, you know, they are, we know now we move to a kind of hybrid mode. So, the, obviously, the the workforce has got even more distributed than what it was before, right? So that means from a, you know, security point of view, um, you know, whether endpoint security or network security or cloud access security as, you know, location has been moved to the cloud for easier access. And overall, I would say, you know, from a data security point of view, there is a lot of, you know, work to be done to make sure it's secure, it's safe and accessible. So obviously from the, if I look at it from a storage cry point of view, it's true that you know, uh, in terms of, you know, making sure that you, you know, that organization do back up the data, uh, but as well, the ability to recover. And then you can speak to any partners. They say, yeah, everybody can do backup, you know, but can you recover? Can you test your recovery? Can you make sure that when that server for uh, breakdown or that laptop breaks down, you can recover the data? So, you know, that, that's point number one, because of the distributed, distributed environment we are in, you know, data security, including with the backup and recovery is very, is very important. Uh, other opportunities that that you know that that um, that we see as well is obviously to accommodate this kind of I don't like to say this kind of new new normal or whatever you but the, the the environment we are in today 
Yeah, I mean, everything around cloud-based applications or hybrid type deployments based on, you know, what the, the, the user profile, the type of data that might be using. So there's still, you know, a lot of different projects that can, they can take on board in terms of providing secure access or secure mobile access to the, to the application. So, you know, whether it's through SSL, VPN, you know, embracing cloud-based um, applications or, or VDI. I mean, you know, there's a lot of different, you know, you know, options from a technology point of view to, to provide that, obviously. Uh, so that's, you know, that, that's what we see. And, and obviously the, you know, the, the, the disaster recovery as a service, um, because it's became evident, especially because of uh, what happened with, you know, the lockdown and we know this can happen again. It's like, how can I make sure I can recover my data or make sure that my server is still running without accessing, you know, the on-premise, you know, uh, office, so to say. So everything around this to recover as a service where you can leverage a third party data center like storage craft, for example, it, it's something that we see, you know, more, more, more and more um, of a concern, especially from the, the smaller kind of, you know, organizations. They understand that, you know, if they cannot, you know, retrieve the data in case of a disaster, um, if the data is only stored on site and they don't have enough site type solutions, if bad things happen, they know they, they will be in a very difficult situation. So we, we start, I mean, obviously the larger guys, they get it, don't get me wrong, but the, you know, uh, the SMB. So this is where, you know, the MSP role is very, very important is, you know, really stressing around, stressing around recovery, you know, and offsite, offsite replication, data applications to ensure, you know, kind of 100% business continuity is critical. So yeah, I would say these are the, um areas or kind of you know different avenues for, for growth for for our for our partners and i'm sure they have other products in their portfolio where they can send more services and and products but that's that's what i would say and and as well important um to notice i mean you know we know that you know data is exploding even more with you know what, what's happening and the digitization of our of our economy i guess and world and you know i'd like just to focus on unstructured data we know it's growing uh, depending on one organization to another one, you know, we can't really predict the, uh, you know, the growth. But I know it's there, you know, there's this massive wave of data coming your way, which is mainly unstructured and has to be stored for either, you know, internal requirements, external compliance requirements, so on and so forth. Depending on the industry, you know, you could be required to store the data for seven, seven years, uh, you know, and that could represent a vast amount of data uh, that will grow over here. So, you know, Again, around you know scale out kind of storage object based storage solutions like OneSafe, there is more and more demand for that type of, of solutions as a kind of long term kind of archiving storage type type product. And it's mainly driven to be honest, mainly driven for compliance. And yeah, I mean we know if you look at all the various security vendors uh, reports, you know we know we're in somewhere. Um, is again increasing or did he ever stop <laughs> you know you could argue but you know that's still you know a major concern so that means again from the data security point of view yeah making sure that you know partners are doing the right thing for the MSPs for the for the end user customers at the perimeter at the end point but at the end of the day it's all about securing the data so you know again backup and recovery is, is, is very important but obviously that's driving still some uh, good um, revenues for, for partners and will carry on to do so yeah you just mentioned um, backup and recovery. So what are your thoughts on the future of that um, sector? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, as, as the solutions are maturing and, and the, I would say the, 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 uh, the understand, I mean, not the understanding, but the, the implementation of backup and recovery type solutions and policies among customers, you know, uh, it's been focusing around, you know, servers, understanding what are my critical servers, can we recover them? You know when you know the server manufacturer comes and replace them or if i've been affected by rent somewhere but as we're creating more and more data and then somehow you know end user customers are fighting to find the right space all of a sudden you can you know the data start to get again to get a bit more spread across various servers and as, as we go forward it's not going to be necessarily having policies based on you know critical the, the, the level of criticality of my servers but more on the data you know the nature, the nature of the data, and the value of my of my data, and then starting to shift things around from, I would say, you know, physical backup recovery in terms on policies in terms of you know these are my servers or virtual machines. It was like, hey, 
what about my financial data? What about my accounting data? You know, is it more, has it more value than let's say the marketing data and so on so and, and building your policies around that. And that means as well from a, uh, a, a replication point of view or, or a, if you like a storage point of view or your backup data, then you can start having again a, a hybrid approach. You know, would you want to have your critical data all stored in the cloud? Maybe you want, but then as well, you want it close to, to you because you know you can access it right away. It's much faster, right? So again, you know, moving away from the traditional kind of way of segmenting your backup and re recovery policies based on the server, but moving more to, to your data. And again, structuring the data, tiering your data, obviously not da all data is equal. Uh, so more data has more importance to you than, than, than others. And uh, from a business point of view, and then starting to kind of build your backup and recovery policies based on that, rather than, uh, as I said, you know, the the servers and and you know leveraging cloud. And I think from a future point of view or short term point of view, is going to be more of a hybrid approach. Um, you know, from on premise and cloud, and then you know, obviously you still have your critical servers, but as I said, you know, you don't really know where your data will sit. So make sure you start that organization start understanding where the data is, the value of that data, and putting obviously the right backup and recovery policies, you know, based on that. Right. Awesome. Cool. Well, that concludes today's 10 minute IT jam with StorageCraft International Product Marketing Director, Florian Maliki. Thank you so much for joining me today, Florian. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.